Hey guys, it's Raven here. Uh, this video today is going to be a gameplay cast of a game I played. This is part 3 of my 3 part tutorial video series. In this game I'm going to use the 12 SS Panzer Division to uh, win my side and show you guys a little bit of how I played and, and whatnot. Uh, generally I'm going to be focusing on myself in this video and then maybe doing a little bit of what's going on in the rest of the match, but this is really meant to be a companion to my 12 SS Panzer deck building video and the deployment video, and which will be linked uh, in the video description. So uh, you can see I'm, I'm deployed on the right over here. Uh, I mean the, the kind of focal point of this area is this town here, so I really have to get in there and try and capture it. Otherwise, Blue's gonna have this big bulge going forward into our lines. I started with three infantry squads, two of them in trucks to be cheaper, and one in a half track for fire support. I have a uh, command SPW223 to uh, give its command aura bonuses. I start with a Boita Firefly, which is a heavy tank, a really high risk, high reward unit for 12 SS Panzer Division, and it's not a very conventional unit to take in a city, but uh, I'm glad I did. You'll see when I get to the actual gameplay. I also took a mortar and I have recon on the side here. Now in my last video I told you it's really important to deploy widely. Make sure you cover the front line and push it forward in all places. Don't just bunch up on one area of the map. Uh, and that's good advice, but on, on this very specific instance I have to fight on this little city in this little corner of the map. So in some ways I'm definitely forced to be a little more concentrated than I would otherwise. But I do have this recon unit over here with this transport to kind of broaden myself out a little bit. And then if, if I need to, I'll widen more. But uh, really, I have to concentrate the fight in this city in this specific instance. And uh, we're going to talk about that. One thing I do want to point out is uh, young Rommel over here. Uh, rather than contest the factory, he's just going to push down this, this corridor and outflank the... Uh, uh, 91st Luftland player here, and uh, that's going to be really interesting later, but for now we're going to focus on, on this area of the game where I'm playing. So uh, you can see I'm moving forward into the city. Uh, also I want to point out, I, I consider myself to be a pretty good player, but I'm not perfect, so uh, if I make mistakes I'll try and point them out and, and talk about them as well, but uh, this isn't meant to be just like super exemplary gameplay, it's just it, I played well and I wanted to highlight it for my deck. Uh, you see uh, Russo's trying to get his... Let's see, I might actually want to turn the sound down a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of getting a little loud. <clears throat> there we go. You see Russo's got his uh, Jeep with an AT gun and a uh, recon team coming around the side here. Uh, they're, they're trying to make it to this uh, tree line. You see if I click a unit and hold shift, it will uh, show where it's going, that little blue line. Obviously he's trying to set up his recon right there so he'll be able to see through this gap and shoot the road. But I, I got there kind of quick. Uh, you see I, I did this uh, truck, got a little far ahead of my main force so it's coming down the road and it's getting shot at. That's a little bit of a mistake but it, it's not really a big deal. Uh, I was really lucky to get here in time to see these units because now I can machine gun them out of their jeeps and uh, and kill them on the road. You see his AT gun unloaded, but the jeep exploded next to it, it took morale damage, taking machine gun fire. So it missed my firefly and now it's suppressed and it'll be killed here in a second. Uh, that was a pretty big deal, but you see uh, the allied player still has two tanks and a fire support vehicle, two early Shermans. Uh, so that's pretty dangerous because they're fighting really close where they can actually pen my Firefly. So I'm trying to be careful. I'm sneaking up a little bit. I can just see this one tank and I'm returning fire. Uh, at this range, which is just under 800 meters, I still have the advantage because my uh, armor is pretty high relative to his armor piercing damage. And of course my gun's a lot uh, more powerful. But you see, now I'm realizing he has these other two vehicles here pushed around the side trying to get my armored car in, into cover behind these trees, but obviously he forces them back. So th this is kind of a problem, because now I know he has a really strong armored force really close to my Firefly. Ideally, I want my Firefly engaging in a lot longer range, 
So I'm kind of smoking to push back and cover a little bit of a withdrawal. And I'm moving this unit. I'm going to move my mortar around to this side so they're not they're not just exposed out here when his tanks push through that orchard. See my infantry are advancing up the city a little bit, but really I'm focusing on micro in my tank right now. I'm not paying too much attention to this. Uh, this is a little bit of a mistake. Russo kind of just advances through the fire. I, th I think he's he's being aggressive because he he thinks he smells blood, and he does have these. He almost gets these units, but my fireflies ready. He's in a decent position, a little closer than I would like, but it can't be helped. You see, I moved him outside of my command unit's aura just a little bit, and I realize, and I start moving the command unit back to try and give him that aura. Uh, the M8 unit bails out. That's like a fire support uh, M8 Scott. But I'm more worried about the Sherman, which thankfully I got a one-hit uh, crew let's see, fuel explosion. I uh, lost my armored car. In the city, I'm advancing up. I got my half-track on the road, providing fire support up the road, and I'm covering its flanks with my infantry. Unfortunately, these guys got spotted before they could make it to that building, so they got pinned down. You can see I already have two infantry units coming up the road. It's really important not to get bogged down in the early gameplay where you're trying to micro stuff. You want to make sure you're calling out fresh units that you need with your income you're getting every minute. And so that's what I'm doing right now. You can see I have these two infantry squads in a kind of supporting role to this half track. He's a little far forward, but he has to be to, to see over here. So I'm, I'm advancing up this road while keeping uh, him covered with my... Keeping the half-track covered with my infantry. Being a little aggressive with my tank, because I know he doesn't outnumber me anymore, because I killed his other tank and his uh, M8 Scott. But I, I, I don't I don't want to get baited into going into this, uh, this uh, orchard, because I know I'll be close enough for a Sherman to pen me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my Sherman around to sit on this road and fire up at these vehicles coming down. You see my infantry squad, uh, my uh, recon squad, if I switch to my view, I, c I can see a lot of like what's coming down the road. I can see exactly where this tank is. I, I was really lucky to get to this tree line before my enemy did. Remember, I, I killed his stuff right on this road. So it gave me a good position to, you know, be able to see and then maybe flank around if I needed to. So I, I really had the initiative here. He had to push frontally. He lost a lot of his units, and you see I'm being aggressive. I have my Firefly in the city, firing up the road to support the advance of the Panzer Grenadiers. Another Panzer Grenadier advancing up, trying to get these houses to widen my front and secure that flank. Uh, he does get seen by the Sherman, unfortunately, so they have to make a beeline to the house. Trying to get him in there so they can uh, Panzer, Panzer Faust him. And they almost do, but they, they miss. And then he... I think he backs up or something. It's actually a really good position too because he's firing into the side. That's really inconvenient. Because I have this squad here, I'm forcing his tank to back up a little more. And you see that exposes him to an easier shot from my Firefly coming back around. So now I just barely have sight on him and I shoot and I kill him. Keep in mind I just barely stayed in the range of my command unit which is also giving command stars to these units. And I think I'm going to push them up in a little bit. Using the mortar to fire and suppress while I move my infantry up through the buildings. Really strong position now because I've eliminated his tanks. Not too worried about my fire rifle. I can get it around this side to cut off the reinforcements. And again, I move my infantry up. I'm trying to use this half track to make these things to surrender. But I just like a half second before this thing got pinned down, uh, they killed the half-track, so that was really unfortunate. If my timing had been a little bit better there, I could have made those surrender and the half-track would have lived. But that's okay. Like I said, a little, just a little bad timing. Had been a little bit better, it would have been great. Uh, this guy bought a mortar. Mortars are really obnoxious, obviously, but since he doesn't have anything out here to cover this, I can be kind of aggressive with my half-tracks and my uh, supporting vehicles. So I, I can... Um, Oh wait, I'm not. I'm still on this view, don't I? All right, there we go. Fortunately, th this unit stayed alive. I thought. I guess I thought it was dead or something, so it killed my uh, commander. Really unfortunate again, but now I have him pinned and he's stuck in that building. You see, I'm moving this half track up because he doesn't have anything. He just has Brownings on these half tracks. He doesn't have anything to actually kill this. 
So moving up, because I really want to kill this mortar, because, uh, you know, that's that's 50 points. That's really obnoxious mortar in my infantry. So I'm just I'm just trying to get in there and, and kill it, get it suppressed. See the fireflies creeping up a little bit. I want to get him in a position to cover this road. Uh, he does have an anti-tank gun over here, and I, I think I saw it, actually. And I, I at least I was aware that it was a danger. And you see uh, this cone, the 200 meter, 400 meters, so on. If you look at the 1,000 meter, the second outermost circle, uh, th that's the max range of anti-tank guns in Phase A. So I know as long as I, I stay, I keep that circle outside of, of this, I'm never going to get shot from this area. So I'm being very careful to keep my Firefly just out of range of anything that could be firing from these trees. And I think eventually I, I move him up over here to have these farmhouses cover his side. But uh, you see, I, I got up to the mortar. I think I make it surrender eventually, but I see now there's an anti-tank gun subjecting me to danger, so I'm, I start pulling back a little bit. Fortunately, I do lose that half-track, but I killed the mortar. That's what that little sortie was all about. Firefly's in a good position to cover the roads. I mean, I, I've got this guy. Like, I, I've won this side, basically. It was, it was such a, a really, like, just total victory, and he's just losing stuff left and right. Uh, and we do we do have fifty three percent map control because obviously I won my side and the mill's doing all right. Fortunately, the left's do, <laughs> doing pretty bad. Uh, like I said, uh, young Rommel just moved down this flank here, and because uh, my, my ally on this side was playing the Luftland division, he's really not very mobile. It's hard to react to unexpected moves like that, and so Rommel just like broke through, and he's he's living up to his namesake. He just he broke through, and he kept going. And th this is really dangerous because it, it's really hard to to get out of that. Uh, I think pretty soon Russo eighty five either drops or pulls the plug or whatever. But uh, and I, I had I had it pretty under control over here, and I'm starting to look over. And say, holy shit, what happened over here? Uh, and that's really important. You you don't want to tunnel vision on your side too much. You want to make sure you zoom out once in a while and have a holistic view of the map and what's going on. Uh, right now we're ahead, but if he somehow managed to close this off and, and win right here, that'd be really deadly. Because he could, he could take this whole area and then we'd be tied or they may even be ahead. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit because it, it takes a little while for me to deploy over there because my enemy hadn't dropped yet and I uh, phase B just started and I bought a lot of stuff to deploy over here to solidify my advantage. Of course, r right then he dropped, so I, I wasted all these points, but can't be helped. Uh, I do see there's a problem here, so I spawn my uh, recon APC. I try to use it to cover uh, Master Moose's infantry and, and kill that uh, the GMC truck. But uh, th this is really bad. Like, he's... I mean, he, he's almost got uh, the, the whole entire factory cut off. The uh, the front line's moving a lot because units are dying and repositioning and stuff. Uh, and at this point, I, I didn't really realize how dangerous it was over here. I mean, here's a Jumbo Sherman. He's got infantry here. He's got infantry here. I was kind of moving forward because I didn't realize the breakthrough was quite that much. But I, I end up uh, losing that uh, APC and... I lose this one not not too long, not too far later, just because I, I didn't really realize what was going on on this side yet. Uh, and then we're obviously in a lot of trouble. You see, I spawned some infantry here, the half tracks. I want to want to eliminate this bridgehead and take it back. Uh, so at this point, I'm I'm really I'm deploying everything on this side because I I need to get this buttoned up and I need to help my ally. But uh, this guy's got a Stuart tank and a Jumbo Sherman like. Oh, really, really deadly. Thankfully, this Grenadier was here and he, he got the Jumbo. That was a huge play uh, for Master Moose. And uh, it really helped help the side because we didn't have anything that could deal with that Jumbo. And we wouldn't probably have had anything until Phase C, really. So uh, I spawned a Panzer IV. Uh, mentioned Kentness from the, so from the middle here. He spawned a Panzer IV. Uh, I eliminated this bridgehead pretty much, and now we're pushing forward. Uh, and again, I have it on times three speed right now, just because it's it's 25 minutes left, and 
I uh, just want to highlight stuff that's happening. We're moving forward, suppressing the AT gun, bombing. We're not in just too great a position though, like we, we should have some recon, we should have some units screening these tanks, but because we're, me and uh, the guy from the middle are both drip feeding units trying to stop the bleeding over here, we're not very well organized and we pay for that. You see my allies tank got detracked and mine's, uh, mine's out in the open trying to fight. We really need to get this tree secure to to uh, secure our flank, and that way we can push forward. Uh, and I also bring an AT gun up to try and stop reinforcements. That's one thing we should have done better was uh, put something here to block the reinforcements coming over. Uh, and they're really deploying into the factory now. Uh, let's see. About to have to fight with my Panzer IV. I know you guys like close-in uh, close shots, so here's a Sherman firing at my stuff. See, he's, he's fighting the Panzer IV over there. Pretty sure he kills him, too. Obviously, the close-up shot isn't all that impressive. I mean, it looks pretty good, though. I mean, you're, you're supposed to be playing from this height. Ah... Uh. So finally, phase C hits, I buy a Command Panther 4, and, I, and I'm, I'm ready to be done with this. So I, uh, I I buy my big guns and bring it out. Blue 4 has a huge advantage in AA, they are, um, in terms of planes. They had a lever. Um, this, this guy left or dropped or whatever. So as a result, the game compensates by giving them more units to use, or more units to buy out and more income. So they have all these planes, and we're having a real, real problem because they can basically bomb us at will, and we don't have sufficient AA to push them off. Although we're, we're buying some right here. You see Master Moose just bought two Flak 88s. As you get those deployed, as soon as they get deployed, they start pushing the fighters off and making them go away, because that, that was really annoying to having them up here just circling. We couldn't use any planes. Uh, so now we're starting to make some, some real progress. Uh, we're, we're getting a little bit of stuff on the flanks to kind of watch the sides, have a Martyr two there. Uh, but we still uh, see the plane still came in. We we still don't have enough AA to stop that yet. We will later. I uh, mentioned Kentness buys a Panther and it it helps uh, get around here. I bought a second Panther. Now look at this. I have it positioned here right in the edge of this factory because I have a straight sight line on on this stuff. When you play, you really have to be aware of those sight lines. What what your tank can see, where it can be shot from. This is a perfect position to cover that road that his stuff's reinforcing down. So he's he's right up there. I bought a command unit to help him, but he's not there yet. Killed one Sherman. I think I'm about to kill that next Sherman too. Yeah. Two Shermans in about five seconds. And now we uh <clears throat> I bombed that unit to suppress it, and then our tanks killed it. <clears throat> this is uh this is where we start to really make progress, because now we have some Panthers on the field, our big guns are out, <clears throat> and uh, we can kind of get control of the terrain. <clears throat> you see there's not too many minutes left. We uh, we have to push up. <clears throat> We're starting to lose the factory, but uh, because of the successes over here, it, it's not too big a deal. We're at 56% of the map control, so we're just kind of uh, pulling the win in right now. So you bought a little bit more AA, and I, I'll like to talk about this here in a second. <clears throat> See, uh, our tank's advancing, but I have a half-track here to screen them. They don't want something jumping out of this building to try and shoot at them. That's what the half-track's for. Now that our Panthers can break through to this open ground where they have these long sight lines up this road, down this uh, pathway, we have a really big advantage over the American Airborne player who's using... Shermans and an armored deck, or um, say airborne, I meant American armored. See, I have my Panther up here with a commander supporting him. Commander's too far forward, that was another mistake. I think he gets killed by the uh, Shermans up here. But again, he still he has this really nice long fire line across the river at anything coming down this way. And uh, we're trying to move our tanks around. 
Unfortunately, I lost my commander, which hurt me, because I, I buy another one right away. Because I want this guy performing at his peak, shooting up that road. Uh, and really, nothing's happening over here anymore, either uh, on the right or on the middle, because the, their middle player deployed into the factory, and uh, young Rommel's coming down this road the whole time. Uh, and the game's pretty much over now, to be honest. Uh, this is like the last hurrah. Is this big blob of Shermans, but we rocketed it. The Shermans are just too clumped up, but they don't really have a choice because of because of where he decided to push down this road. They have to be clumped up, so they're really just vulnerable to my tanks. And you see, he left. He said GG. The game was over. So now you see, at this point, we have two Flak 88s and some AA guns. If you notice, we haven't been rocketed too much anymore because we finally have the AA to push planes off. We make a little bit of a mistake here because Master Moose's Flak 88s are grouped up, so uh, Toppin starts to uh, artillery them with howitzers. Really dangerous. Artillery, I mean, uh, anti-air is really vulnerable to artillery. Really vulnerable. Like, as soon as it shoots, the enemy knows where it is. So you want to be really careful not to bunch them all up like we did here, and also to move them around a lot uh, after they fire. Which is kind of hard, because obviously these are towed vehicles that a couple of guys are trying to push around. So it's hard to move them around, but you just got to do it. Uh, and obviously the game's... The Scottish player bought like four Challenger tanks, but you know, the game's pretty much over at this point. So, uh... I don't know why it says total defeat, but we won. Uh, you see my uh, my KD ratio is really good. Obviously the game's not all about KD ratio, but it does give a good indication of your micro and unit preservation. But obviously we won on points. Uh, it was a pretty interesting game just because of that push around the flank, and also I, I felt I played really well in the early phases. So that's what I chose to highlight for this video. Uh, if you would have liked, maybe I should have done uh, live gameplay where I'm actually playing the game rather than just casting it. If that's something you'd like, let me know. Uh, again, I'm looking for feedback and advice on what kind of content you want to see, and especially geared towards newer players, what would uh, help them perform better or learn the game a bit. If there's anything you think I didn't uh, cover or I, I should have talked about, also let me know. Uh, that's probably about it, so I think I'll. Cut it off here. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Take care, guys. Thanks.